Hello, good morning. Welcome to our outdoor little uh, act of worship and my sermon uh, for this Sunday. I'm down near uh, Comox Marina, as you can see behind me, and there's a reason that I'm here. I wanted to come somewhere beautiful, uh, and hopefully you'll see why shortly. So we're going to have a very short act of worship to begin with, and then I'll bring you the readings. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall declare your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for today is taken from Proverbs chapter 8, verses 1 to 4 and 22 to 31. Does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding raise her voice? At the highest point along the way, where the paths meet, she takes her stand. Beside the gate leading into the city, at the entrance, she cries aloud. To you, O people, I call out. I raise my voice to all mankind. The Lord brought me forth as the first of his works, before his deeds of old. I was formed long ages ago, at the very beginning when the world came to be. When there were no watery depths, I was given birth. When there were no springs overflowing with water. Before the mountains were settled in place. Before the hills, I was given birth. Before he made the world or its fields or any of the dust of the earth. I was there when he set the heavens in place. When he marked out the horizon on the face of the deep. When he established the clouds above and fixed securely the foundations of the deep. When he gave the sea its boundary, so the waters would not overstep his command, and when he marked out the foundations of the earth. Then I was constantly at his side. I was filled with delight day after day, rejoicing always in his presence, rejoicing in his whole world, and delighting in mankind. Here ends the reading from Proverbs. The appointed psalm for today is Psalm 8. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds, and the animals of the wild and the birds of the sky and the fish of the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And we have a reading from the New Testament, which is taken from John's Gospel. Chapter 16, verses 12 to 15. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into into all the truth. He will not speak on his own, he will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will re receive from me what he will make known to you. Here ends the reading. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So, um, I've been here, well, if I've been here, I've been here nearly three years now, um, and I'm still getting used to Canadian North American culture. Now, my youngest son and I, we have a hangout time every, every night, and sometimes we read together, sometimes we go on YouTube and, and watch a video. And on YouTube, somehow, and I'm not sure how, we discovered... Um, somebody and, and I've been assured by Mike in the admin office that everybody will know this person 
but a, a guy called Jay Leno. Do you know who he is? I've never heard of him before, seen him before. But he does this funny thing called headlines and, and me and my, my son, we rather enjoy that in the evenings, have a bit of a giggle. Um, and one thing that he is really into, Jay Leno, is stupid criminals. Um, and my son loves it too. So I, I brought you some examples of some of the stupid criminal stories that he's brought from, from the newspapers. Um, so one of them was um, a woman asks a teller at a laundry to change a $20 bill for her. And then when the woman turns her back, the teller turns her back, the woman pulls a knife on her and demands the contents of the till. Well, in the till was a $10 bill and a $5 bill. So she ran away and she'd lost $5 on the deal. Um, similarly, my son loves this one. A man, um, a, a thief, spent ten ninety nine on a, a hammer because he wanted to smash the window of a liquor store and steal some booze. So he did. He spends ten ninety nine, smashes the window, grabs a bottle of wine and runs off again and and the the price of the wine was 8.99 so he lost two dollars on the robbery as well um another one i'll give you another one one more a man demanded a thousand dollars in the bank he went to a bank and he demanded a thousand dollars in hundred dollars bills so the teller told the man to go out um, and wait in his car and one of the bank employees would bring him the money well the man was still found waiting in his car when the police and the detectives and the FBI turned up at the scene. <laughs> so they got him. Oh there's a few more but that'll do I think. You look him up online if you want to listen to some more. So I don't think any of those people were, were showing much wisdom were they? But it amuses us when we hear stories of people being really dumb. I mean it's not just the Jay Leno stupid criminals but there's things called fail army where we can watch people messing up and we've all heard of the Darwin Awards haven't we? And there is something deeply amusing in other people's foolishness. And if, we, if we're looking on the right side, there's something amusing in our own foolishness as well, although it might not always feel like that at the time. But wisdom, conversely to that, wisdom is deeply compelling. Um, and yet it's, it's elusive, isn't it? But what is wisdom? I've got one of my dictionary definitions here. Um, wisdom is the ability to contemplate and act using knowledge, experience, common sense, prudence, and insight. So wisdom is applied thought and act in action. So more than that, wisdom is deeper, it's found more foundational, it's built into our consciousness. It's something to desire. And that wisdom is a good thing and something to aspire to. And we think often of godly men and women, monks and hermits, the mothers and fathers of the church, not only as holy people, but people great in wisdom. And in their day, people flocked to these early desert fathers and mothers for their wise words and their advice. It should be no surprise that the closer we draw to God, the closer we draw to wisdom, because all wisdom has its source in God. Like him, it was pre-existent, before creation. Now they're really beautiful, so I, I want to read to you those, those last verses of um, Proverbs again and just, just think about the, the way that wisdom is portrayed as being pre-existent. The Lord brought me forth before all of his works, before his deeds of old. I was formed long ages ago at the very beginning when the world came to be when there were no watery depths, when there were no springs, before the mountains were settled, before the hills, before he made the world or its fields or any dust of the earth. I was there when he set the heavens in place, when he marked out the horizon on the face of the deep, above the clouds, when he established the clouds and fixed the sea and its boundary. I was constantly at his side. I was filled with delight day after day. So wisdom was there before creation and during creation and is inherent in creation. For it's there for us to seek and to try and grasp for in everything we see, if we just know how to fathom it. Now we must be very careful of over personifying wisdom. It is not a separate entity. It is not separate from God. In the Bible, it's never regarded as independent from God. Rather, it is an attribute of the living God that leads to reverence of God and knowledge of God. 
So like anything else about God, uh, wisdom is difficult to grasp fully. It can't be constrained by logic or intelligence or defined by facts and figures. Its elusive character is best conveyed in mystery and story and, and thought and imagination maybe. And wisdom stories invite you to delve below the surface. I've got an example of a wisdom story. Hopefully I've got enough time just to give it. It's very short. This is just an example of a wisdom story. It's called The Map. Once, I've got it in a book here. Once a father was looking after his children and trying to keep them entertained, but he wasn't having too much success. It was a wet Saturday and the children were getting bored. They were starting to get on his nerves with their restlessness and their constant chattering. But the man was inventive and suddenly he had an idea. He took down a magazine from a shelf and opened it, looking through it until he found a map of the world printed on one page. He tore the page out of the magazine and proceeded to cut it up with scissors into small pieces. Then he jumbled up all the pieces and placed them in a pile on the floor, like pieces of a jigsaw. Then he set his two young sons the task of putting the map together again, thinking that this would keep them quiet for a good long time. He left them with it and went off to make himself a cup of tea or coffee. Imagine his amazement, therefore, when five minutes later he came back to find the map neatly and accurately put back together again. How did you manage to put it back together so quickly? he asked, taken aback by their skill. Oh, it was easy, the younger boy replied. You told us it was a map of the world, and when we looked at the pieces, at first we didn't know where to begin to sort it all out. It seemed impossible. But then we realised there was a picture of a man on the other side, so we put the man back together again, and when we turned it over, the world came back together again as well. Yes, Dad, chimed in the other brother. It's ever so easy. If you put the man right, the world is okay. See what I mean? <laughs> that is a wisdom story for you. And there was once a master of such stories. We called the stories parables. And the master? Jesus. And it's no surprise there either, as Jesus too was pre-existent before creation and as God made man, he had full access to wisdom. We don't. Even the disciples didn't always understand Jesus' parables and he had to explain them to them. In fact, I'm going to bring you uh, a couple, some verses now from Matthew 13. The disciples came to him, Jesus, and asked, why do you speak to the people in parables? He replied, because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you and not to them. Whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. This is why I speak in parables. Though seeing, though, though seeing they do not see. Through hearing, though hearing they do not hear or understand. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. For truly, I tell you, many people, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it. And to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. So wisdom is elusive. But as we draw closer to God, our eyes and ears open. They become open to his wisdom and we see it in the mountains and the fields and the dust of the earth and in the heavens and the clouds and the sea. Knowledge and applied insight. Knowledge and insight was applied and is inherent in creation. And that's why I wanted to bring you here where the clouds and the mountains and the sea combine, because wisdom was applied when God created those things. The wisdom of the world is different from the wisdom of God. Uh, I'm going to turn to Corinthians now. So 1 Corinthians, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is a teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of the age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him. 
God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demanded signs and Greeks looked for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. So I've spoken in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One second. Do you want to come through? Do you want to come through? There's some other people coming through to enjoy, enjoy the view. So just let them come by. Hi. Yes, I have. I'm just, I'm just filming our online service. Yes. And do you do that often? Yes, every week. Not down here? <laughs> Not down here necessarily, no. Okay. So okay. Well, we just came down to have a look and then go back. Okay. Do you mind if I carry on? No. All right. <laughs> we're United Church. We were just talking about uh, our the United Church as we came down here. Okay. So we've got some of the United Church quiet. ladies with quiet. us today. So, um, So let's pray. So Father, we thank you that you are a God of wisdom and of beauty and that both of those things combine in this town of Comox. So we pray your presence over this town. We pray your power and your wisdom falls upon us. Lord, we thank you for those who live and work here and we pray that uh, all of those who have concerns and worries that they can bring them to you and that you will be present in their lives. We pray for all our churches in the valley. We pray for St. Peter's and pray for the United Church, as the ladies are here, who belong to that church. And we pray that all the churches in this valley and all the leaders and all the, the faithful here listen to your voice, Lord, and sense what it is that you want us to do in this place. We pray too for those in our congregations and our towns and in our families who are in need, whether that is through sickness or finance, loneliness, worry about other people, Lord, we pray that your balm comes upon all of them and that they know you, their Father God, the God of wisdom and the God of beauty. And in a few moments of silence, we bring to mind those prayers that we wish to lay before the throne of God today. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen, ladies. Yay. <laughs> and we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today your daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So that's it for today. Thank you for joining us. I'm glad to be back after my uh, vacation last week. It's lovely to be here with you and we'll be here again next week. We'll be somewhere next week, but we'll be on your screens next week for, um, for our worship again. So I'm going to leave you for a few more minutes to admire the, the scene and think of not only the beauty, but the wisdom of God that was present in creation. Bye for now. See you next time.